Hello, I'm Andy and welcome to Element 14 Presents. On a recent trip to Falkirk, I visited a little store just off the high street that sold all sorts of magical items such as robes and wands and books and potions like these. But I felt the potions lacked something. They needed to be more animated, maybe glowing or swirling or more magical. As Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So I thought, why not add some electronics to my project to make my potions more magical? I decided to build three different effects for my potions, but each using the same basic building blocks to drive the outputs. Now, digital electronics are not renowned for their organic feel, so I wanted some circuits that could give me a bit more variability. So I looked in my handy reference guide and the first circuit I found was a voltage controlled oscillator. Now this uses the control pin on pin five to affect the frequency of the output. So that seemed like a good start. And then further through the book was a sawtooth generator. And that utilizes the timing components of the 505 and generates a, a sawtooth or a triangle wave, depending on the values of the components used. So by combining these two circuits, I can produce my organic feel for my uh, potion effects. Let's see that in action. I've wired up the two 555 timers, both running in a stable mode. First, let's have a look at the output of that. See, we've got a fairly clean square wave coming out of that. But we're not interested in that square wave. We're more interested in the signal from the threshold pin. So that's connected via the transistor. So if we have a look at that, you can see that we've got uh, charging and discharging curve. It's going to connect across to the control input of the second 505 timer. And then if we have a look at the output of that timer, we can see how the frequency is varying depending on that uh, sawtooth input. The parts for this project are 555 timers, 4017 decade counter, ULN2003 Darlington drivers, some capacitors, some resistors, some tiny blue LEDs, UV LEDs, some signal diodes, a QI charging coil, some UV dye, and a selection of potion bottles. Our first potion is called Glowing Death. It's going to be in this rather nice skull bottle, and we're going to put some oil and some ultraviolet uh, dye, and then it's going to be illuminated from underneath with some UV LEDs, um, and that should give a sort of pulsating glowing effect to the potion. So here's our circuit for our glowing death potion. We've got a few extras compared to the, the basic circuit. I've got a 100 microfarad capacitor here across the power supply. And I've got here on the second 505, I've got this diode, which means that the waveform coming out here, we can control the on off time a little bit better. And that gives us a, a better sort of pulse width modulation signal to this transistor here. And that in turn will then drive the six LEDs, which will connect on the pads on the board. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! Our second potion is called Swirling Mist. That's going to be the oil again, but this time with a red mica flake. And we're going to put one of these little beads in it. 
So a magnetic stirrer. And then underneath we're gonna have a series of coils and we'll use our 555 timer circuit to drive a 4017 decade counter and that will rotate the uh, stirrer in the bottle and hopefully give us a nice swirling effect. We've got that dual 555 generating that jittery pulse sequence which leads into the 4017 decade counter um, and that gives us outputs that go high in turn. But we've got an extra chip this time. We've got a Darlington driver chip that allows us to control higher currents. Uh, I'm expecting the, the coils to take a reasonable amount of current because they're only uh, 100 ohm resistance each. And that allows us to sequence through those coils in turn, which should give us a rotating magnetic field. And that in turn will drive our magnetic stirrer that uh, we'll place in the potion. So our experiments with the coil driving didn't really work at all. It worked with the compass and we saw the rotating magnetic field, but when we tried it with the magnetic stirrer, it just wasn't moving that stirrer at all. So what I've done is I've redesigned the base plate for this potion, giving us a big hole in the bottom. And then that allows us to place a second magnetic stirrer underneath the bottle. Um, and by rotating that magnetic stirrer with a motor, rather than trying to do it with magnetic fields, we can get the same kind of effect. And hopefully all that will be nice and quiet. Because one of the reasons that I didn't pick a motor in the first place was that uh, I didn't want a sort of noisy servo or motor spoiling the illusion. Our third potion is Storm in a Jar. I'm gonna take a little jar and add some cotton wool balls to act like a, a rain cloud. And then threaded around that, there'll be some small blue LEDs. So as our effect uh, flashes those LEDs, it will look like uh, little lightning strikes going on in, in the jar. So that I could transmit power from the outside of the glass jar to the inside of the glass jar, I've got these QR charging coils. So they come with a little driver circuit and a driver coil. And then on the receiving side, we've got a receiving coil, our receiving circuit, and then you can put whatever load on you want. So for testing here, I've got a LED and a resistor. So we pop that in the glass jar and then we put it on top of the driver coil. And we can see that the power is transmitted through the glass jar. And there's our potions rack, with three different potions, each made a little bit more magical thanks to modern technology. The pulsating death, the swirling mist, and storm in a jar. Each using circuits containing 555 timers and a few other components. And my first venture into designing and assembling my own PCB using surface mounted devices. A resounding success, apart from a slightly scorched bench. So. If you want to see more projects like this, or you need help with your own projects, head over to the Element 14 community. We'd love to see what you've come up with.